That, that, that brings me into uh, one of my uh, key topics, um, uh, getting back to, to basics and, and back to the, to the uh, original traditions of, uh, of the academy. What you're really doing, you're just being a host. You're the host of the symposium and you're engaging in the traditional format of a dialogue, which is a two-way sharing of thoughts. And, and this is what technology is giving us. And you are just one of the really good examples of how important it is that there is a host. Because if, if, there's, if, if there's no venue, nowhere to, to turn to, then, then you're limited to the connectivity that you have already. Well, that's a very, yeah, very good point. Very good point. Um, and that's why I'm actually uh, hoping that, that more and more people are, are going to open their mind and their eyes to this because you yourself might be struggling and what we really could use is more focus from um, the people that might be better off. It, it might be a help if someone uh, could be a protector for these events and these activities and actually finance these hostings and, and these activities um, on a global scale. Um, that was just something. Yeah. Well, no, it, it is, at least in my life, it, it is happening, um, you know, it's happening more and more. Uh, it's just, I, I, you know, I've taken a major leap of faith um, by, you know, by moving from, you know, from the security of, of a job and uh, all of that in in Canada to you know to being in no to living in in Peru and uh, just having the focus on this is what I'm doing and having the confidence that I will be you know I will I will be taken care of by the fact that um, you know the information that I'm learning is important to other people so um, it's you know it's all it's kind of obvious that um, if someone's interested in a topic um, you know, like the elongated skulls or something like that, that they'll say, well, where can I find a book about that? And so that's why I've been, you know, been writing books. Um, all of my YouTube videos have been mainly just to send little bits of information out and share, but it's also been fundamental for, uh, pra you know, for me practicing with, with uh, video so that I can make my own documentaries at some point, or if I become involved with... Uh, with a film crew, like for example, you know, I'm in the Ancient Aliens uh, TV series. I was able to watch the director, the cameraman, the sound man, and see how see how they coordinate each other. Um, just so, just so that in, in future I I can make documentaries or at least be an active participant um, with that. What uh, what we are trying to promote is uh, is the fact that yes, of course, it would be nice to be able to have access to studios and. And, and very high-end cameras and these things. But the technology is already so cheap that you can just as well do what you've been doing of documenting a lot of these things yourself, uh, which is basically equivalent to yeah. gathering a lot of, of, of resource material, which will eventually be able to be presented when technology either gets cheaper still, or you get the assets to, to be able to make something with them. And I think everyone should really start thinking more about uh, copying that attitude that you've been doing and, and just go ahead and do it. As I, I think I mentioned this to you when um, I was showing you some of that uh, novel technology, that if you had one location that you had had all your uh, tour uh, visitors uh, out and, and looking at, and they all documented it with their video or their, their pictures, Creating a mesh of all of that would be almost like being there. It would become sort of like having access to a virtual reality through the work of all the people on the globe. And and, and I, I just that's it, it's a, it's it's that direction that we're moving. And it, it might seem low tech now, but it will be normal in a few years. I think that's a yeah, that's a very excellent point. Um, it's. Um, you know, it's wonderful to be able to, 
you know, to travel into the Amazon jungle or it's wonderful to, you know, be in the mountains and things. But uh, what I found even through, you know, through my dialogues on Facebook with people is, you know, I know people who are, you know, for example, grandmothers who live in, in northern Scotland who are fascinated with what I do and they don't have the physical capability to leave. So they get to it's a second-hand experience but at least it's it's probably as close as they'll ever get to being in you know in Cusco or all of these other places and they you know they love it so I'm very happy to be able to uh, to share that with them it's the same with uh, with the way that I'm I'm writing my books I, I wrote a little book about Machu Picchu again to uh, mainly, t there are two points about that. One is the fact that Machu Picchu is much older than the Inca, which most people don't know. Even the visitors don't know that. And um, and also, I wrote it as a virtual book. So step by step, as you walk through the site, I present photographs of what you would be looking at if you were there. And it's uh, again, it's for people who. Before they travel to Peru, they they can get a visual idea of what the makeup of Machu Picchu is. And for others who will never be able to come, then they'll have at least, you know, an idea of, of the layout of the site, the age of the different structures, the history behind it. Um, it's I guess it's kind of a new way of, of writing. It's just, you know, I'm very visual in the way that I think. And so when I write, I, I you know, it's I'm seeing pictures, so I just write it that way. And it's also how I've been doing the, the YouTube. It's as though someone's standing next to me because it's like that's what you're looking at. You know, it's just exactly. It's easy for me. It, it's that remote access to all these things that, as you said, we, some people might never have the chance to actually visit. Um, I'm an I'm a huge consumer of uh, of uh, documentary. That's almost the only thing that I like to watch on on television. And a lot of these mm -hmm. uh, places all over the globe, no one will have the time or the finances to ever go to all those places if they have the passion for it. So, so giving giving them access to a sort of more hands-on experience um, is just it's just going to make so much difference in humans' lives. Um, I, I, I recently have been watching a lot about um, uh, the history of, uh, of England and things like Scarabray and I don't know if I'm, I'm ever going to be able to go there but, but if I had access to um, more detailed information because of people sharing that um, that would just be amazing because it's it's almost going to be like being there. The, the material you've been sharing, yeah. that's like I, one of your comments on your YouTube was, it was so cool that, that uh, you um, zoomed in that close and that you were touching the wall. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's really what it's yeah, about. That's... It's, it's about the feeling that that's actually almost you doing that. That's what you would do if you were there. So well, that's a good point, and uh, as well, sorry, but especially with the elongated skulls, I've, I've been, you know, now that I'm assistant um, museum director of, of this small museum that has the largest collection in the, you know, private collection in the world, I'm able to actually take them out of the case and look at them, whereas if you, you know, if you go to a national museum, they're behind glass, you can't really get, you know, when people ask for uh, you know physical details you can't get close enough to look at them um, and if you you know if you want to then it's like well where's your degree in in whatever you know and and um, fill in all these forms and you know bribe me or something and and it's uh it's just it's too much and, and i think the same thing with making documentaries documentaries take you know in general take too long with what uh, with the technology we have now we can i'm i'm actually happiest when i can film something and post it on you know on youtube the the exact same day so i can say this is where i was today you know look this is you know this is almost it's not live but it's like Three hours ago, I saw that, and it's like, oh, you know, wow, you know, people, people love, you know, people love that. That it's, um, and in in terms of uh, environmental issues and um, and civil rights issues and all that sort of thing, it's also very important because you can say, you know, today in Tunisia it was this, you know, I was there, I saw that, and it doesn't go through fil, you know, you know, you're not going through the filters of uh, of CNN or or any of this stuff. It's like. 
I saw it. If you like it, great. You know. Exactly, and it makes it so much more authentic. And I think authenticity is is going to be a huge part of of the of the change that we are looking at in the future. Um, I wanted to to backtrack yeah. a little bit and 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 get you back on the whole general uh, thought of um, lost knowledge and your work with um, kind of like experimental archaeology because what I'm seeing right now is that many of these things are are being picked up by laymen it's, yeah. it's not the professional because they don't have that they don't have enough time mm -hmm. and, and it's just what have you been uh, focusing on in, in the, that area with the rediscovery and and what have you found that you didn't expect to find? Well, I think um, the thing is that the more that I'm able to do this, the more I, I'm able to connect with people who are focused professionals. And so, you know, a great example is, um, of course, is with... Uh, in Egypt uh, was when Dr. Uh, Robert Schock was, you know, was brought by uh, John Anthony West to look at the Sphinx. And um, John Anthony West was very, I think, important at that point, and, and still is. But what he, what, he, what he did that was so important was that he said, you're a geologist, look at that and tell me why, you know, why there's so much um, erosion on that Sphinx. And, of course, the Egyptologists who have been trying to be experts in everything, which they're not, you know, is, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to make fun of them. It's just that they're trying to be engineers and architects and religious, um, you know, religious experts and all these different expertises, which no hu one human being can do. So Robert Schock simply looked at that and he said, water must have done that. Um, and so it's like, okay, you're a geologist, and that's what you say. Uh, there's been no water here for thousands of years. Well, that's the point. And that's when the whole idea just went boom. You know, it's like, oh, my God, the Sphinx might be 10,000 years old. And it's because they brought in him as an expert. Uh, the same with um, uh, the author of the Giza Power Plant, um, Oh man, Chris uh, Christopher Dunn, oh, yeah, Dunn, who's a you know who's an engineer, and he's you know he he looks at certain things and he goes that looks like a machine did that because I work with with machines. Um, so gradually, that's what I'm finding is that I'm able to um, be in contact with different experts and I can ask you know because I can't answer the, the the questions, or it would be stupid for me to try to say, well it's this you know. I think that's so really it, what it's. Uh, it, what it's about it's it's about the fact that someone is 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 doing practical work i think it's the practicality it's it's getting out there and then connecting with the right people and what i've noticed is that exactly. it, it it's it's something that's been going on since uh i think since the late 60s early 70s that more and more access to academia from laymen have just caused this uh um, huge growth and development in trying things in um, in reenactment and uh, in experimental archaeology um, mm -hmm. things like uh, in in um, some of the, the discoveries or rediscoveries or reconstructions of uh, how medieval uh, warfare was done that's been done a lot by mm -hmm. uh, live reenactment groups and, and role playing types so, so it's not the academia as such, it's the, the people on the outside that then work with academia. That's where they get all their new findings. And what I still mm -hmm. s believe is, is a huge problem to, to the um, development of science is that they still seem to be a little bit locked up in that ivory tower. And people like yourself and, of course, like uh, John Anthony West and Stephen Miller and Christopher Dunn, they're kind of like standing on the outside saying, guys, are you going to come out and play with us for a bit? Mm -hmm. and exactly. No, that, that's, ex that's exactly it. And, and, and as you mentioned, uh, I've been following these developments in, in so many fields, and, uh, and I think that it's, it's so vital that the people that brought this change about also do like you do and become beacons or focal points or call it hosts to the whole um, activity 
uh, people like uh, John Anthony West that made some of the most profound discoveries and and the, the, it's the way that he presents it it's so passionate where mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes um, academia can be kind of mm, dead and without spirit 